There's a long-standing belief in the dog community that during World War II, when the Germans and the Japanese were allied together, they crossbred the Akita with the German Shepherd, and that is how we got what we know today as the American Akita. But in this video, I'm gonna prove to you that that is a complete lie. Welcome back to the Akita Life. My name is Tony, and with me as always is Haga the American Akita. Say hi, Huggy. Say hi, bud. And if you hear any squeaking in this video, it's from that little pupper over there. Make sure to subscribe to see the video where we go over picking her up, interviewing the breeder, and how to introduce a new puppy to your home that already has an Akita in it. First, let's talk about Dog Man by Martha Sherrill. If you're a fan of Akitas or just dogs in general, this is a great read. After World War II, Japan was in rough shape, there was famine, there was poverty, and the Akita breed had dwindled in its size, and there was an estimated about 15 to 20 Akitas left in the world period. This book tells the story of Morie Sawataishi. He was an Akita breeder who also showed the breed. In the book, Morie describes how there were essentially two bloodlines of Akitas at that time, the Dua line and the Ichinoseki line. These two lineages of Akitas had different characteristics, and some people preferred the Dua line and others preferred the Ichinoseki line. The Dua line was a bit beefier and stockier and is what we know now as the American Akita. In the 70s, that style of Akita fell out of fashion in Japan, but remained popular in the US. That is how we got these two breeds of dogs. It was not from crossbreeding with German Shepherds. Originally, the American Kennel Club saw Japanese and American Akitas as one singular breed, because despite their physical differences, they did have a very similar temperament, but because confirmation showing is so much about aesthetics, they decided to eventually separate them into two different breed categories. Now, testimony from someone who was there during World War II and helped bring the breed back from the edge of extinction should be enough to convince you that breeding with German Shepherds is not how we got the American Akita. But if that is not sufficient enough for you, and it probably isn't because, hey, we're on the internet and everyone thinks they're an expert, let me prove to you with a few more reasons why German Shepherds and Akitas are not how we got the American Akita. Let's take a look at the most famous Akita in the world, Hachiko. Now, when you look at a photo of Hachiko, does he look like your typical Japanese Akita, or does he look more like an American Akita? Well, in my opinion, he looks a lot more like an American Akita. Now, Hachiko was born a decade and a half before before World War II, which means the Germans had not yet brought German Shepherds to Japan, where German Shepherds and Akitas were supposedly crossbred. So if Hachiko predates Germans and Japanese crossbreeding dogs, then why does he look like an American Akita? The reason is simple, and that's because what we know today as American Akitas are from Japan and were not crossbred with German Shepherds. Moving on. All it takes is a little bit of common sense to figure out that German Shepherds were not bred with Akitas to form the American Akita. And what do I mean by that? Well, take into consideration that German Shepherds and what we know as Japanese Akitas are about the same size dog. Male Japanese Akitas can weigh between 80 to 100 pounds. German Shepherds on the heavier side are usually about 85 or maybe 90 pounds. Yet the standard American Akita is 100 to maybe 120 or even 130 pounds. You don't get a larger dog breed by breeding two smaller dog breeds together. That literally just does not make sense. Sure, you might get the one or two oddball situations where a puppy grows up to be bigger than both of its parents, but that's not how you're gonna create a whole lineage of dogs that are bigger than the two breeds that it supposedly came from. Next, we have to look at behavior and temperament. You would think that if a dog breed like American Akita supposedly came from two other breeds, like a Japanese Akita and a German Shepherd, that it would inherit not just the physical characteristics, but also the temperament and behavior of both of those lines as well. Yet if you look at the behavior and temperament of an American Akita, it is very similar to that of a Japanese Akita, and it is nothing like that of a German Shepherd. German Shepherds are high energy, they need a lot of attention, they need a lot of training, they need to be run and worked, where American Akitas are known to be cat-like and love to lay around. They're both used for guarding, but I can show you tons of breeds that are used for guarding. That doesn't mean that American Akitas came from German Shepherds. German Shepherds can be neurotic, they're almost completely the opposite in their behavior from the American Akita, which to me says that these dogs do not have a drop of German Shepherd blood in their bodies. Speaking of blood, that brings me to my next point, which is when you DNA test an American Akita, it comes back as an Akita. There's no German Shepherd blood 
in the American Akita's bloodline. And if the crossbreeding was so prominent that it fundamentally changed the breed into creating a whole new breed, you would think that, hey, guess what? The DNA test would be able to show that somewhere down the line, there was a German Shepherd mix in here. But when you get the DNA test done, guess what? 100% Akita. Now, lastly, let's talk about the Tosa. If you're not familiar with Tosas, they are another Japanese breed. They're very large and they're prominently used for dog fighting in Japan. And some people say that the American Akita gets its size from the Tosa. And this would make a little bit more sense because Tosas are much bigger than Japanese Akitas and American Akitas. While some crossbreeding probably has happened in Japan from time to time with the Akita and the Tosa, I don't think that's how we got the American Akita. It doesn't make sense that we could extract just simply the size of the Tosa and put it into an Akita to get a larger looking Akita. Tosas are also a Mastiff type dog and none of those other physical characteristics look like an American Akita. Their ears are floppy, their lips are droopy, their tail is straight, they have short hair, their legs are skinny, and they have long bodies. They literally look nothing like an American Akita. There are so many breeds in the world whose physical characteristics have been changed from selective breeding, it's not hard to imagine that the American Akita is the same. Some people just bred the larger and stockier versions of Akita because that's what they preferred, and that's what just happened to make its way to the United States, hence the name the American Akita, because that version of the Akita is popular here. Some people seem to take offense when you say that Japanese Akitas and American Akitas are very similar. They're both great dogs, they're both difficult dogs, and if you have one or the other or a mix of some type you should love those dogs to the best of your ability no matter what because at the end of the day this channel is about responsible dog ownership not proving that one breed is better than another if you want to grab a copy of dog man by martha Sherrill, it's a great read even if you don't own an akita i will put a link in the description and if you want to see our video about picking up our new akita panda make sure to click right here where we go over our trip to ohio to pick her up our interview with the breeder and how to introduce a new baby puppy into your home with an akita already living there